Welcome back to Ride JBI. I'm JB. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install the WP Exact Pro 7548 Pro Fork, aka Cone Valve DIY Kit. Awesome. So, with that in mind, we're not going to do it step by step. Instead, I'm going to show you just the finer details of how to install the exact pieces of our kit. This video assumes you already know how to work on the WP Exact Pro Fork or Exact Pro Damping Cartridge System. It requires special tooling. A lot of the walls and thicknesses of the tubing is rather thin, so you need to be very precise about what you're doing, or you can easily damage and mess up the components you're working with. So, first item you're gonna get from us is a complete JBI Titanium subvalve that is complete with all the shims already on it. The shims that we provide here are going to be custom selected and built based on the information that you give us. It will have an O-ring right on top. This O-ring is not going to be moved or used. It's here to keep the shims in place during shipping. The O-ring on the back side, just above the threads, that does stay in place. Now, I have a small Allen key right here. And when I go to install our titanium subvalve, we're going to take off the shims just so that way we can easily get to our flat spots for installing this with a socket. I think this is a number four Allen key, maybe even a number three, but something pretty small. You can see what I'm doing. Now I'm going to do this over this tablecloth here. Please take your time at home so that way you can maintain order of all of these. Excellent. So now that we have this stand alone, it's time to get this installed into here. I now have the compression assembly fixtured in the vise here. First thing I'm going to do is remove the 17 millimeter nut that fixtures our compression valving to the compression piston post. A lot of these pieces we're going to reuse. Be careful. We got the nut. We got the check spring underneath it and then the check plate as well. Let's keep that assembly all together. Next, the come off is going to be our compression piston. This we're going to reuse as well. And then next we have all the shims, which we're not going to reuse any of those. So you can just grab them. And however they're sorted, doesn't really matter and just set those aside. And then next we need to remove our compression piston post but we're going to want to apply some heat to it first to ensure that this post unthreads. If you don't do that, this black post is instead going to unthread from the cap and you will have created a lot more additional work for yourself. So in order to remove these, we got two methods. <clears throat> first method is the flame and we heat up just the tip, but you want to be very careful not to melt or burn the Teflon bands or rubber O-rings here. That's why I just want to do the tip. But a much safer method, and what I prefer, is a heat plate. I believe this is from Amazon. Got it for like $19. It's been feeding my family for the past 10 years. They work excellent. But what you can do is we take a socket, we can put it upside down, turn the heat plate on, and we're going to put the flat part of our compression post right against this socket. This isn't plugged in, but I'll turn it all the way up to five and just let it get hot and I'll walk away. All right, now that time has passed. This will definitely be hot to touch. So just keep in mind, I am guilty of sometimes heating things up and then immediately grabbing them afterwards as if I did not realize I just heated up something. Um, this isn't hot, I already cracked this loose. So for demonstration purposes, this is easier to show you guys, but this will be hot. So we'll grab that off. We're gonna refixture it up in our vise. And now we want a 15 millimeter socket or a wrench, whatever you want to do. The key is you don't want to damage our free piston at all while we're removing this. I like to utilize the 15 millimeter deep sockets in order to remove these. So I'm going to grab this one right here. When I pull down on the free piston with my hand, you can see that I expose the hex shape of the compression piston post. Cool. So we got that cracked loose. Now we can unthread this by hand. And this is our compression piston post that we're going to change out. It looks like our needle stayed inside there. Sometimes the needle will come out inside of this with it. <clears throat> That's okay. Just make sure to put it back in. 
Now on this setup, I'm gonna be changing out the fork pressure spring rate as well. Right now it's an 18. We commonly like to use the uh, 16s. Um, when I give you your DIY kit, I'm gonna give you a technical or a JBI suspension settings guide. And it'll be really comprehensive with technical data. On that guide, it'll tell you the recommended pressure spring that we recommend for you. Um, they don't come in the DIY kit, but we can sell them um, additionally with a DIY kit if you need one. So this would be the time that you would wanna change out that pressure spring. You can do that by just sliding off the free piston. We're gonna have a plastic spacer and then our pressure spring comes off. We we'll set that aside. We're gonna grab our new 16. These aren't directional, so you can put it on either way. I like to put the numbers going up where it says 16. Granted, you can't see it while they're assembled. Our plastic spacer is gonna fit back in place and back with our free piston. Now there's an O-ring on the inside of here that seals against our free piston shaft. So take your time reassembling this and don't catch that O-ring in a way that you're going to damage it. As you can see, I'm kind of walking it on to the shaft. So now that we have that part exposed, we are ready to install our JBI titanium subvalve. We're gonna put a little bit of Loctite on the threads right here. And then also afterwards, we're gonna to torque it down to nine foot pounds. That is 108 inch pounds, or for your metric guys, 12.2 Newtons. I repeat, nine foot pounds or 12.2 Newton meters. Not a ton, because this is an M8 thread. This is titanium, but it's also hollow, and it's being mated to a hollow aluminum threaded shaft. So we don't gotta go crazy. That's also why we're using Loctite to ensure that this stays in place. At Ride JBI, we love the orange Loctite by uh, Permatex. They advertise it as the strength of red, but the removability of blue, meaning you don't have to utilize heat in order to remove it. I got some Loctite on our threads right there, and I'm going to begin thread this by hand. Ooh, beautiful. You can tell the quality of thread that we have cut with how nice it threads into there. We'll get that in most of the way, and then we'll go back over to our fixture so we can torque this up. Again, units are important. We're gonna do nine foot-pounds. Another tip is this is an 18 millimeter, so you're gonna need an 18 millimeter socket. Please use a six-point socket and not the starred sockets. That's important because the surface of our free piston here needs to be perfectly flat. If you damage this surface at all during the install, then the shim's not gonna sit flat and it's really going to reduce the effectiveness of this valve. So that's really important. Um, while we're doing this, grab onto the free piston, pull it down so you can expose that. And one more time, we're gonna measure. Awesome, so do it one more time. Perfect, so that tells us this is fully torqued. I'm feeling fully, fully torqued. So good so far. Next, we can jump back over to our shim stack that we have provided. We're gonna slide this right back on. Now there's no special orientation that the shims have to be in meaning spinning them any which way, just slide them down and they're all going to be centered on this post. The O-ring has come off because we're not reusing it. So now we're ready to reinstall our compression piston again. It looks very similar, but it do has two different sides. The side with the recess, recess in the center is going to be facing up. The side with no recess is gonna be the one that goes directly against our shims. Before I do that, I'm gonna blast off with a little bit of compressed air to clean it. And I'm actually gonna do this on our shims. Now, when we send you these shims, they will be pretty clean or they will be very clean as well, but it's always good to take extra steps of preventative measure. So we got that installed. Please look at your O-ring around here. These O-rings don't normally get damaged at all because this piston's fixed, meaning it doesn't move at all, but sometimes you will see them torn. So if that's the case, seek out a replacement one. My favorite website is theoringstore.com. You can buy every size O-ring you could possibly think of from there. So next, you're gonna get a bag. 
with two small shims inside of it as well with the sub valve. Now is the time to grab out that shim. Here's where this is gonna go. Earlier, we removed a few pieces from the top. So first, our check shim is gonna go back on first. I'm gonna clean that and it's looking kinda yucky. And now next, the shim we gave you is going to go on first. What we're doing is we're kind of limiting the travel that this shim can lift up because it doesn't need to lift open as far as it does. Um, it lifts open really far, which means it has to travel really far to then close again. And um, that doesn't make this very responsive. So instead, we're going to reduce it by adding another shim. So that's what that's for here. This recess or this extended piece extended feature is going to fit into the recess of that piston. So we need to be very careful that as we assemble this, we don't catch the edge of this shim and bend it or distort it in any way. There's a way to check it after we're done. Um, these shims should be able to spin and also lift open if we didn't catch them. Um, now's a good time to throw a little bit of Loctite onto our assembly as well. What I'm doing is I'm holding the shim with my hand against the check spring that's inside of there. So that's how I'm kind of holding this uh, assembly together. And then we're gonna start threading this on. Cool, so if you wanna come in and zoom in a little bit, you'll see that the top hat feature is starting to engage and now we need to line up and center the shims with it. Cool, we just made that snug. Now we're always going to provide these kits to you to where pretty much the threads are pretty much evenly matched with the nut. They might protrude a little bit or they might be recessed a little bit depending on the shim stack that we give you. But it's pretty much going to be exactly spot on as you can see. Now the next step is we wanna torque that down. And the torque rating for this, which is an M6 thread, but it is titanium, is going to be 45 inch pounds not foot pounds, inch pounds. So 45 inch pounds is just a little less than four foot pounds. We got our small quarter inch drive torque wrench ready to go. That's torqued down. We can see that the shims here can spin and also they can lift open. So what we did is we limited how far they can lift open just a little bit, not by a lot, because the amount that lifts open is when the fork backfills after a compression stroke. It didn't need to lift as far as it did. So this is in there, correct? Wipe off any Loctite you may have gotten on the inside. A nice habit we have here at Ride JBI is to take some WD-40 afterwards and we're gonna spray some just right through the center. And you'll see some of the oil come up through here. That just ensures that if you did get any Loctite in there, it's not going to uh, dry and cause your clicker assembly to be seized up. So, so far so good. You have correctly installed the JBI Titanium sub valve with our JBI spec shim stack that we custom built for you and everything is torqued down and locked tight as it should be. So now we're gonna shift gears to the mid valve section of this. Now I'm gonna show you how to install the mid valve portion of the JBI spec WP Exact Pro 7548 Pro Fork, AKA cone valve, DIY kit. Other parts you're going to receive from us is going to be our JBI titanium leaf spring shim assembly. Here's our JBI titanium leaf spring. You're also going to get a titanium spacer as well and then the complete shim stack and then this is the complete rebound stack as well. You can tell by the delta shims on the outside and then just the smaller washer as well. We're going to begin with the mid valve compression side here. This will arrive to you in order similar like this, all zip tied together. Again, please utilize something to keep everything together. So I got a small number four Allen key. Let's just slide it through the center. I guess easier said than done. There we go. Cool. You don't have to worry about the spacer too much. Well, meaning putting it in that because there's not an order to it. But that's going to be the first piece that goes on is this spacer right here. It's going to go on to our mid valve 
compression piston post. As you can see, I've removed everything. The mid valve piston has been removed, the cone valve assembly. So we just have the black OEM WP cone valve mid valve compression post. Make sure there's no shims or anything on there. This installs first, and what this does is it extends the length of our eight millimeter post of where the shims ride and float up and down. So that's the first piece that goes on. After that, our first up should be our JBI titanium leaf spring plate or washer. We will have these cleaned when we send them to you, but please always take the extra step to at least blow it off with compressed air or a microfiber rag because any debris is very critical and contaminating inside of these suspension setups. So we don't want any. The uh, side dash concave is gonna be facing us. And then now we have all our shims in order still, except I have them the wrong way on this hook in order to put them on there. So let's see if I can. Nice, cool. So you're gonna see two small 14 millimeter shims on one side and then not any on the other. These are gonna go inside of that cup. They act as limiters in terms of how far the shims can deflect or bend inside of the leaf spring cup. That's why it's really important that you maintain the correct order of the shims that we provide them in. Excellent, so we have this all installed. Everything is centered. Next, we're going to install the, reinstall the WP mid valve piston. Please check this recess in the center to make sure that there's no small eight millimeter, sorry, six millimeter shims on the inside. There should not be any. Sometimes there may be some from the <coughs> OEM factory configuration. They do that in order to space this up and down. For our setup, you will not need any of those. So just the piston gets installed next. Again, we'll blow it off with some compressed air. Recess, this recess is going to locate perfectly with that titanium sleeve or spacer that we installed earlier. So that is the compression side of our mid valve. And then now we're going to install the rebound side. So here's our rebound shims. Let's put these on our Allen key. Delta shims are tricky. They're not my favorite. I understand why, I understand why we have them but they can be tricky putting together and it's really important you put them together correctly and you torque this down correctly so they do not rotate or move while you ride or else that are substantially decrease the performance of the forks but you can probably guess what we're going to do first is blast this off with some air these top three holes are going to be what our delta shims cover we don't have to worry about them being lined up as we drop them on. Now that we got them on, now it's time to start lining up these shims. So cool, getting all the deltas together. So again, this is the opening of the mid valve. Our delta shims are going to cover that. Sorry, the opening of the rebound side. We're gonna cover these with the delta shims. Now the tricky part is there's three or four shims in this assembly. We don't want them kind of uh, not all lined up directly up and down. You don't want them uh, kind of fanned out like a fan of cards. You want everything to look like it's just one shim. So we got those started for now. Now here is our M6 nut that retains everything on there. When you removed it, the nut was sitting like this meaning the cylinder section was going down directly against the uh, washer. But as you can see, there's no threads on the cylinder section of that nut. So we're actually gonna put this nut on the other direction, like this. So that way we engage all of the threads on our piston post and all of the threads of our nut. So again, when you took it apart, it was in this configuration. We put it back on, we're gonna put it on upside down so that we reutilize all of the threads. Before we do that, I'm gonna put a little bit of orange Loctite onto here, and then we're going to start the process of tightening this down and maintaining the order. So I like to do this by hand and then get it kind of snug before I even attempt to start getting it torqued down. So we got our torque wrench. 
Uh, for these, this is an aluminum post and it's hollow. So the torque value is 24 inch pounds. We're gonna verify that all these delta shims are lined up. They're looking very good. I found that as I go to tighten this nut, it's gonna want to rotate the shims and the piston. So I'll actually move it with it. Until you, you will feel a point where it doesn't want to keep moving as one. Ooh, man, I don't want to get too cocky, but I think we might have gotten this first try. Ooh, there we go. We got our torques back. Awesome. So what I want to look for now, I was going to make sure that all of these delta shims are lined up. And again, they're not kind of cascaded or fanned out like a fan of cards, but these are looking lined up just beautifully. So those are good to go. Now, yes, this torque spec's pretty low. That's why we use Loctite, and that's also why you're gonna wait at least six hours or more to let this Loctite feel fully cure before you reassemble it into your forks. Also, we're gonna utilize our WD-40 method again to ensure that no Loctite went down into the center. Now, this is gonna squirt out at some holes down here at the bottom, so make sure not to squirt yourself. So, great job. You have successfully set up your JBI tuned compression assembly with our JBI titanium sub valve, complete with JBI spec valving. And you have successfully installed our JBI leaf spring mid valve configuration and rebound stack as well. So now you are only steps away from finishing the assembly and completion of your forks. For the rest of the information, you just need to follow the JBI suspension settings guide that we provide you, which again, will tell you the pressure spring we recommend for you, what main fork spring rates we recommend for you, and also what oil volumes and clicker settings as well. All of that is custom built and decided based on the information and the orders you give to us. Thanks for checking out this video. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. Um, you can also find the product for our DIY kit in the product description below of this video.